，欢迎各位同学收看今天的课程。今天我们要讲的是第十一章，第十一章的主题呢是 a conflict and a resolution， 就是争论与解决。那我们今天很高兴邀请到 Taylor 老师 ，Hi， I'm Taylor。还有很高兴的邀请到两位同学，一位是 Tiffany 同学 ，Hello， I'm Tiffany。还有一位是 Laura 同学 ，Hi， I'm Laura。In this unit, we'll be pushing the story forward with a conflict and resolution, dialogue, point of view, and endings to avoid. 好，在本章呢，我们要讲的重点呢是 conflict 冲突，还有 resolution 解决方式，以及呢如何写 dialogue 对话，还有用各种的 point of view 就是不同的角度来写作。最后还要讲到呢 endings to avoid。就是说呢，我们应该有哪一些故事的结局的写法应该要避免的 ？Let's begin with conflict, which is two opposing forces fighting against each other. This could be between people or even between emotions. 首先，我们从 conflict 就是冲突开始讲。那冲突呢，是两个对立的力量互相对抗。那这可能是在人跟人之间的对抗，或者是在情绪之间的对抗。Conflict will push the story forward and see our character in a new situation. 那冲突呢，可以把我们的故事呢更往前推进，并且呢，让我们的角色处在新的形式之下。There are two types of conflicts: internal and external. Laura, would you tell us what the internal conflict is? 冲突呢有两种形式，就是内部冲突呢，还有外部冲突。Laura, 能不能告诉我们什么是 internal conflict， 就是内部冲突 ？Okay, internal conflicts are problems that the characters are facing with themselves. Maybe they have to give a speech but are afraid of talking in front of an audience. Another example is a young man wanting to ask a girl out on a date but is afraid of being rejected. 内部冲突的例子像是角色自身面临的问题。像故事的主角可能做一个演讲，可是他害怕站在观众面前讲话。那另一个例子也可能是一个年轻人，他想要约一个女孩出来约会，可是又害怕被拒绝。Very good. And Tiffany, what is an external conflict? 那 Tiffany， 你可不可以告诉我们什么是外部冲突呢？ Mm, external conflict involves the character against some outside force, such as another person. Nature, fate, or the gods. Some examples include a man stuck on a deserted island trying to survive, or two best friends fighting for the affection of another, or a hero who must prevent a villain from destroying the world. 外部冲击，外部的冲突涉及角色对抗某种外部力量，例如说对抗另一个人呐、啊，自然、命运或是神灵。或是比如说，有一个人在荒岛上挣扎求生，或者一个必须阻止小人破坏世界的英雄，都是。Very good. And as writers, we could add another level of texture to the story by including elements of both internal and external conflicts. 很好，作为作家呢，我们可以使用内部跟外部冲突的元素呢，来使得这个故事呢更增加层次感。For instance. A surfer wants to ride the biggest wave, but he's afraid because the last time he tried, he failed and nearly drowned. The surfer must overcome the big wave, which is an external conflict. He must also deal with the fear of death and the doubt in his abilities, which is an internal conflict. 举例来说呢，一个冲浪者他想要乘最大的浪潮，但是他很害怕，因为上一次的尝试呢失败了，而且他几乎淹死。那这个冲浪者呢，他必须要 overcome riding the big wave， 就是要克服大浪。那这个呢，就是一个 external conflict， 就是外部的冲突。那他还必须要处理什么呢 ？Deal with his fear of death， 就是对于死亡的恐惧。那还还要干嘛呢 ？Deal with doubts of his abilities。对自己能力的怀疑，那这些呢都叫 internal conflict， 就是内部冲突。Now let's talk about fighting the conflict. Between the start of the conflict and the solution is where the action takes place. We need to see how the characters will react and what they will do about it. 
。那现在呢，让我们来谈谈如何的解决冲突。一旦有冲突呢，我们就必须要采取行动，最后呢来解决问题。我们需要看看角色将如何反应。We must think of what the main characters want. We can use the office conflict example we discussed in the last unit. In the case of the employee and the boss, we must know what their goals are. 那我们必须要考虑到主角到底想要什么。我们在上一个单元曾经用了一个例子，就是办公室冲突的例子。那这个例子里面呢，我们就必须要知道这个老板跟这个伙计他们到底是想要的目标到底是什么呢？就是他们的 goal 是什么。We can say Johnson is our main character, and he has found out that his boss Fred. Is stealing from the company. So then the question is, what does he want? The boss to be fired, to give the money back, for Fred to quit, or maybe he wants to blackmail Fred for lots of money. 像 Johnson 是我们的 main character， 主要的角色。然后他发现他的老板 Fred 正在从公司偷窃，所以问题就来了，他想要什么呢？嗯，比方说他可能要解雇老板，或者是要叫老板把钱吐出来，然后再辞辞职，或者他想要借此 blackmail 勒索 Fred。Exactly, and we must answer this question before we begin writing because it will influence how the character resolves the conflict. Additionally, we must make sure that the setting we choose fits the conflict and what the character wants. 非常好，在开始写作之前，我们就必须要知道我们的角色到底想要什么，因为那个会影响到我们的角色如何解决冲突。另外呢，我们必须要确保选择的这个背景呢是适合冲突的发展，还有角色想要的东西的这样的一个背景。Um, so does Johnson want everyone to know about the boss and get him fired? Then he might approach Fred in a public place like the break room. He may even ask a couple of co-workers to stay so that they can hear what happens. Or, if Johnson wants to blackmail Fred, then the office break room is probably not the best setting. Fred's office or somewhere else private would be more suitable. 假如说 Johnson 想要让所有人都知道老板做了什么事，并且让他没有工作，那他可能就会在休息室和 Fred 说这件事情，并让其他人也知道这件事情。或是他甚至可能要求几个同事留下来，让他们听到发生了什么事。又或者说，如果 Johnson 想要勒索 Fred， 那么办公室休息室可能不是最好的场所，也许应该在 Fred 的办公室或是其他私人场所会更合适。Now that we have discussed the conflict, let's talk about the solution. This will end the story, whereas the conflict is what started it. Because short stories are short. There is no space for the after effects of the climax. 很好，因此呢，既然我们已经写好了这个冲突的部分，那让我们来谈谈解决方案。那解决方案呢，可能就是这个故事的结尾，因为这是一个短篇小说，那它很短，所以我们没有办法再讨论后面的发展事项。For example, the killer has finally been caught, and everyone is safe. There's a final police investigation to tie everything together. Such endings would work, but you would have to do so with as few words as possible. 举例而言呢，这个故事的结尾可能是这个凶手终于被抓啦，每个人都很安全。那你也可以写说，哎，有位警察想把最后做一个调查，那把所有的事情都连接在一起，那这样的结尾也是可以的啦。那但是呢，因为我们这是短篇小说，它非常的短，所以你要用很少的字来写完这些事。So, if your story involves a killer, simply let his defeat be the ending. If it's a love story, then just end it with a kiss. With the example of the surfer wanting to ride the biggest wave, end it with him catching the wave and falling off the board, safely or unsafely, depending on how you want to end it. 因此啦，如果你的故事是涉及一个杀手的，那么这个结局呢，可能是哦，他失败了。那如果这是一个爱情故事的话呢？哎，最后可能就会是一个吻，一个浪漫的吻。那如果这个冲浪者呢，他想要乘最大的浪，那结局可能是他从这个板子上滑落，然后呢，可能是安全的滑落，或是不安全的滑落。这取决于这个作者的想法是什么。Now there are two types of climaxes: explicit and implicit. 
Explicit means the ending is very clear, while implicit means the ending is not so clear. Uh, can you give me an example of an explicit ending literature, Laura? 好，我们要讲的是这个高潮，就是 climax， 它有两种的形式，叫做 explicit， 就是显示的。或是 implicit 叫做隐式的高潮，那显示呢表示结尾是非常的清楚的，而隐式的表示结尾它不大清楚。Nora， 你可不可以给我们一个例子显示的 ？Okay,、uh, for example, the short story Paul's Case by Willa Cather is a good example of an explicit ending. The main character Paul jumps jumps in front of a moving train, killing himself. I think an ending does not get any more clear than that. By this, the entire story and any loose ends should be tied up. 嗯，像是 Willa Cather 的短篇小说《Paul's Case》是一个很明显结局的很好的例子。嗯、um, ，主角 Paul 跳到一辆正在行驶的火车前自杀。那我认为这个结局很清楚了，这样这个结局让整个故事有个高潮的结尾。Quite right. Thank you. Now, an example of an implicit ending for literature, please, Tiffany. 好，非常正确。现在呢 ，Tiffany 同学，你给我们一个隐性结局的例子。Okay, so an implicit ending pretty much leaves the reader to put things together. A good example would be *The Vault* by Bay Badbury. The virtual reality nursery with its animals seems to become alive as the parents lose control of the children. In the end, the psychologist can't find the parents. He sees lions fighting, then leaning on, leaning down to quietly eat something before drinking water. It seems like the lions might be eating the parents in virtual reality, and perhaps the psychologist will be next. In 此如果隐性的结局既然是让读者有思考可能结尾，可能的结尾有一个很好的例子就是 Ray Bradbury 写的《The Vault》。随着父母失去孩子的控制权，带有动物的虚拟现实托儿所似乎变得活跃起来。最后，心理学家找不到父母，他看到狮子在打架，然后俯下身来安静在吃东西，还有喝水。看起来狮子可能。正在虚拟现实中把父母吃了，也许心理学家就会是下一个被狮子吃掉的人。Exactly, the reader is left to imagine what has happened. Now that we have discussed the endings, let's talk about the different points of view in which a story can be written. The two most common are first person and third person. 很好，那读者呢可以想象发生了什么？那现在呢，我们已经讨论完怎么写结局了。那我们接下来谈谈怎么样用不同的观点来写故事。那我们最常见呢，就是用第一人称，就是 first person， 就是第一人称；还有一种呢，叫第三人称，就 third person， 就是第三人称的方法来写故事。First person still tells the story from a character's point of view, most often the main character. We only see and know what that character sees and knows, sometimes called the I point of view. The language used is I. Me, mine, we, and our. 好，第一人称的视角呢，是从 a character's point of view， 就是从这个角色他的观点来写故事。那通常呢，这个 main character 就是主角，我们只看到并且知道这个角色所看到的内容。有时呢，这也称为我的观点。你所使用的字都是跟我有关的字，比如说什么呢 ？I, me, my, we。Our, 这些字都是我，不然就是我们。When you tell a story in the first person, the character is telling it, which means the words and sentences need to fit the personality and wants of that character. Let's go back to our Johnson and Fred example. Say Johnson is telling the story, and he is very nervous and has never done anything to hurt anyone. The writing should reflect this. Tiffany, can you give this a try? 好。当第一人称在讲故事的时候呢，这个角色正在讲故事，这意味着呢，他所使用的语言呢，必须适合该角色他的个性还有他的需求。让我们回到刚才那个 Johnson 跟 Fred 的例子，就是那个老板跟伙计，还记得吗？那这个假设说 Johnson 啊正在讲这个故事，那他是很紧张的，他从来没有做过任何伤害任何人的事情。那在文字里面呢，你就要反映出这一点来。
。那 Tiffany 同学，你可不可以试试看要怎么样显现 ？OK， I saw Fred in the break room. Now is the time I had been dreading. The room felt like it was a hundred degrees, and my body was covered in sweat. I walked slowly, putting one foot in front of the other. This is it. If I want to back out, now is the time. 我在休息室看到 Fred， 现在是我恐惧的时候了。房间感觉好像是一百度，我身上都是汗水。我慢慢走，一只脚走完才走另一只脚。如果我害怕，想要退出，现在是唯一的时候了。That's a great example. The reader can sense all the emotions the character feels through the character's own eyes, so to speak. So, what if the author decided that Johnson was a major risk taker in life and got a major thrill from it? How would that same passage read, Laura? 好，很好。那我们可以说啊，这个读者可以通过。角色的这个角度来显示角色所感受到的情感。那么，如果作者呢是要表达 Johnson 是在做一个人生的一个冒险，而且 Johnson 呢他也感到很兴奋的时候，那在文字上呢应该如何表现呢 ？Rora， 你来试试看。Okay, I saw Fred in the break room. Showtime, baby! This is the moment I have been waiting for. I'll either become a rich man or lose everything I have. A smile formed on my face as the sweat ran down my forehead. I took a swift step and forward, and headed straight to him, trying to hide my smile. 我在休息室看到 Fred， 好戏就要上场了。这是我一直在等待的时刻。我要么就能成为有钱人，要么就失去我拥有的一切。汗水从我的额头流下来，脸上洋溢着微笑。我迅速地迈出了第一步。直直地走向他，试图掩饰我的微笑。Also a great example. Now let's take a look at the third person point of view. This is most often the voice of the writer. In this way, the writer can tell the story from all perspectives. They can get into the head of every character and describe what they think, see, feel, or even information that is not known to the characters. 很好。那现在呢，让我们来用第三人称的角度来看。那用第三人称呢，通常是作者的声音。用第三人称呢，作家呢，他就可以用各个角度来讲故事。他们呢，可以进入每一个角色的脑袋瓜里面，然后去描述他们的想法、见识、感觉到的，甚至是各种讯息。The plus side to writing in the third person is that you can use your own words. There is no need to worry if the writing style fits the personality of the main character, like writing in the first person. However, the third person often lacks a sense of urgency that a first person can provide. Let's look at the previous example now done in third person. 那用第三人称来写作，它的好处是这样的：你可以用自己的语言、自己的方法来写，那不需要担心说你的写作风格呢是否适合这个主角的个性。但是呢，这个第三人称的写作通常啊会缺乏第一人称的写作可以给予的这种紧迫感。那我们来看看第三人称的视角写成的例子。Okay, Johnson saw Fred in the break room. Now is the time he had been dreading. The room felt like it was a hundred degrees, and his body was covered in sweat. He walked slowly, putting one foot in front of the other. This is it, he thought. If he wanted to back out, now was the time. Johnson 在休息室看到了 Fred。现在是他恐惧的时候了。房间感觉好像是一百度，他的身体被汗水覆盖。他慢慢走，一只脚放在另一只脚上。时候到了。他怎么想？如果他想退出，现在是时候了。Now both perspectives are perfectly valid ways to write. You have to decide which you like best and what works best for your story. You can look at other stories you have enjoyed reading and see what point of view they use. 很好，现在这两种观点，就是第一人称或是第三人称，都是非常好的一种写作方式。你必须要确定呢，你喜欢的是哪一种，以及你比较擅长的是哪一种。你可以看看你喜欢读的这些故事，然后了解呢，他们使用的到底是第一人称呢，还是第三人称 
Now we will move on to the types of endings you should avoid when writing. There are quite a few that should not be done because they have been done too many times and are no longer satisfying or leave the reader disappointed. 现在呢，我们就来看看写作的时候应该避免的结尾是怎么样的类型。有很多类型呢，我们应该避免，因为呢，他们已经被太多人使用了。那作者如果再用的话呢，读者就会感到很失望。Laura, would you like to read the first example, please? Laura, 请你读一下第一个例子。Okay, it was all a dream. Your reader gets engaged in the story, follows your character. And just as the climax is being reached, the character wakes up. This is often called a cop-out. It feels like the right could not come up with a good ending. So they just made it a dream. Uh,这都是一场梦。你的读者开始参与你所写的故事,跟随你的角色,并在达到高潮时角色醒来。这通常被称为cop-out,放弃。感觉像是作者在写作品时想不出一个好的结局,所以作者把它写成了一个梦. Exactly. It's incredibly disappointing, and it feels like the whole story is a waste of time. Make sure you give your story a proper ending to make all the reading worth it. Uh, the next example, if you would, Tiffany. 好,非常好,这是一个很令人失望的,而且感觉到整个故事呢,都是在浪费时间。那确保你的写作的故事呢,是有适当的结尾,让读者觉得他花的时间是值得的。好,Tiffany,可不可以读下一个例子?Okay, they were never there. This overused cliché involves the main character finding out that the other character they had been talking to, fighting against, etc., is, in fact, Dead. They had been talking to a ghost, or a vampire, or a werewolf the entire time. They see a picture in an old newspaper showing said character having died a few days or years before the story. Yes, and this again makes the reader feel a bit disappointed after having spent the time with the story. Our final example, if you would, Laura. 好,是的,這個呢又會使我們的讀者呢,他花了很多時間在這個故事上,然後之後呢,他又感到很失望。Laura,可不可以幫我們讀最後一個例子呢? Okay, um, happily ever after. Unless you are writing a fairy tale, most stories do not end with everything perfectly tied up and happy. This is unrealistic and readers don't like it. The main character can be successful. But it shouldn't be perfect. The film Office Space is a good example. Three employees steal money from their company and it looks like they might get caught. They come up with a plan to cover their tracks so they don't get sent to jail. In the end, they are successful because no one finds out who stole the money, so no one goes to jail. However, they lose all the money in the process. Um, 有一种结局是从此以后快乐、幸福快乐，但除非你写童话故事，否则大多数的故事都不会以一切完美结合和幸福为结尾。嗯，这样的写法不太现实，而且读者也不喜欢。主角可以成功，但不要所有的事都很完
。如果你想要成为一个成功的作家的话，那你应该避免这些结局的写作方式。One more thing before we end this unit, we need to talk about how to write dialogues when telling a story. Remember. Adding dialogues can add a breath of fresh e- freshness to the story. For these stories, each set of dialogues should be indented and written on the next line. 好，最后呢，我们提醒大家如何写对话。请记住呢，推添加一些对话呢，可以使我们的故事呢比较新鲜，而且呢，这些呢对于故事呢的内容呢也比较好。那每个对话呢都必须要内缩，并且呢写在新的一行。Look at this template. 好，那我们可以看到呢，在这一个 PowerPoint 里面呢，第一个例子 ，Person A 就比方说有一个人的意思 ，is talking 就正在讲话，就 blah 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 说一大堆话。哎，记得他说完这多话之后，最后是要用一个逗点，这点大家记得，因为平常我们可能觉得，哎，有个主词，有个动词，一句话讲完，要用句点。好，可是我们在对话不是这样子哦。首先我们放一个 quotation mark， 就是那个引号，然后之后呢？讲完了，巴拉巴拉巴拉一堆话之后，写一个逗点，然后呢就写某某人说，好 ，person A 说，那这个 person A 呢，如果你是用 he 呀、啊、或者 she 的话，要用小写。可是我们这个例子里面是 Mary said， Mary 就因为是专有名词，所以要用大写。然后我们看第二个例子，那第二个例子讲到 person B 就是另外一个人又巴拉巴拉巴拉又一直说，说了一些事，说完之后也是一样，用一个逗点，然后呢，最后呢也是又说。Person B said, "Oh, he said what? Good, remember this person B is also small. Except if you're John or Mary, like this. For example, below this is John, so you use small. Below this example is there's a person who says, "Person A, ah, starts to answer, 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 and keeps on saying, 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 saying." 说到最后的时候呢，我们有看到最后这句话说到完了。虽然说到完了，他说了很长很长，说到完，可是事实上他不是要用句点了，他也是要用一个逗点。然后最后再说某某人说，那这个某某人呢，也是用小写的。那除非你是用一个什么呢？用一个专有名词，比如说 John 啊、Mary 这样子，你就可以用大写。好，这就是我们大概要说某某人说的时候是这样说的。Remember that writing a dialogue exactly the same way can be tedious and a bit boring for the reader. It is important that each dialogue has some variety to it. Mix things up by inverting the character's name and the verb. Move the position to the front of the quote and change up the verbs used. Remember to keep it interesting by using variety. 请记住哦，那我们这些对话呢，如果我们一直用相同的模式来写，可能是很乏味的。所以呢，可以用不同的模式来写。例如呢，我们可以把主词跟动词颠倒，或者是呢，把主词、动词呢移到这个引号的前面去。然后呢，我们也可以改变我们的动词。怎么样改变动词呢？比如说呢，像 said s a i d 这个字，我们就不一定要每次都说 said 啊，我们可以说什么 talked。就是不同的字可以增加我们的多样性。In the next unit, we'll be learning a specific style of storytelling called the hero's journey. 那在下一个单元呢，我们将学习呢如何写英雄的故事。那今天呢，非常感谢大家收看这一集的节目，欢迎大家下个礼拜继续收看下一集。